The annual Grammy Awards are taking place this evening from Los Angeles. They've already declared the winners of the rock and metal categories earlier this evening in an untelevised portion. Now, the nominees have one glaringly absent band. That group, of course, is Sleep Token, who over the last year have been on a crazy run, taking off like a rocket, so much so that just a few days ago, their tickets went on sale. The ticketing system had a major issue. The company apologized. That was a huge mess, but it speaks to the level of demand that exists for this group. Maybe even some of those arenas they're playing weren't big enough, which is shocking to see currently in rock. We haven't had a band like this in quite some time. I'd say probably since Ghost. And I don't think even Ghost took off this fast. They had more gradual growth into the very big band they are today worldwide. But still, what's going on with Sleep Token is crazy. And it's frustrating to not see them nominated. As I understand it, there could be a number of reasons why they're not nominated. Maybe they were, weren't submitted. Maybe they weren't submitted. I don't know. Maybe they weren't within the time window, although it appears they were. And so if they weren't submitted, did they get through? Why weren't they considered? So I'm not really sure about this process. So I'm gonna bring someone on who's very familiar with how it works to help me understand this further. But also first, I just wanna go through the nominees and the winners and just a brief audience poll I took from you at home. Get your voice heard as well. And we're gonna take a look at that. All right, y'all. So here we are, the first category, best rock performance. Sculptures of Anything Goes by the Arctic Monkeys, More Than a Love Song by Black Pumas, Not Strong Enough by Boy Genius, which won the category, Rescued by Foo Fighters and Lux Eterna by Metallica. So you have Boy Genius winning in the best rock performance. Best metal performance, Bad Man by Disturbed, Phantom of the Opera by Ghost, 72 Seasons by Metallica, Hive Mind by Slipknot, Jaded by Spirit Box. 72 Seasons took that one home, it's Metallica. What am I to say about that? They're iconic, you know? I mean, they're just legends. I'm not surprised they won. It's Metallica. Hard to compete against them. I would say, in my view, Jaded is a really strong song in that category. And so I, I thought they could have been in contention. Totally not surprised though that it's Metallica. You're nominated against Metallica. Really tough to overcome that. Just a, a um, iconic band. Next up, you've got Best Rock Song, Angry by the Rolling Stones. Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl by Olivia Rodrigo, a big pop singer. Emotion Sickness by Queens of the Stone Age. Not Strong Enough by Boy Genius. Rescued by Dave Grohl. Boy Genius won that one as well. Best Rock Album, but here we are, Foo Fighters. Star Catcher by Greta Van Fleet, great band, both great bands. 72 Seasons, Metallica, This Is Why Paramore, in Times New Roman, Queens of the Stone Age, Paramore won that category. So Paramore, this is why that record, the band, obviously, outstanding group. Haley Williams, one of the best singers and rock singers out there. So Paramore's winning that category. Of course, every year there's some sort of a controversy related to the nominees, but I wanted to ask you directly, get your voice heard about how you feel about these nominations. All right, so here we are. I put this up about an hour ago. So we've got 778 votes so far. Not a ton, but a reasonable snapshot into how people feel. So it says 11% of you are somewhat satisfied. 4% of you are very satisfied. 8% are stoked. 22% are disappointed. 56% are down, downright bummed. So, you know, you've got about 70 some odd percentage points of People who aren't feeling great, aren't feeling good about the nominees. Why is that? How do we fix it? I don't have all the answers, and I do think the Grammys are important. I think that if improved, and there have been a few years where I think they've had some pretty solid nominations. There's been some years you've seen bands like August Burns Red, I Prevail, get nominated, and it felt like they were trending in a more kind of relevant direction as it pertains to the rock genre, and so, how can that be improved upon? Let's bring on somebody who's kind of been there and understands it to help me understand this better and hopefully some of you at home. Joining me now to discuss this topic is one of my friends, Joey Sturgis, a wonderful producer. He has produced some huge rock songs and I'm kind of bringing him on because he really understands the process of nominations, committees involved in this. Joey, what I don't really understand is you have this and a lot of people don't understand. I'm not trying to you know, be too critical of them. I think the Grammys are important because these sa these songs, these bands, they deserve recognition. It's just difficult for me to really understand 
how Sleep Token doesn't get nominated, considering the run they're on, I've had some people reach out to me and tell me it's possible they weren't submitted. Walk me through this. What do you think of this whole situation? Sure. So um, I guess the number one thing or the elephant in the room is just understanding how all of this works, right? So the Grammys are really um, catered around the idea of celebrating a single year at a time of all music across all genres. And with rock and metal, uh, we have very few awards. We only have one award for metal, period. Um, and by the way, another thing that's confusing is when they say best rock song, they actually also include metal in that award. A lot of people don't catch on to those kinds of things because the way the Grammys use these words like rock and metal is kind of um, confusing. But the bottom line is a lot of this is complicated because of involvement. And what I mean by that is there's obviously a ton of engagement and um, participation in these other uh, categories like pop and uh, best album. Obviously, you're going to have so many people participating in these things, around 30 to 40,000 voting members. But when you go into rock and metal, you are cutting that pie into a very small slice. We're talking about maybe 1,000 to 2,000 participants in the voting process of those awards. So basically what I'm saying is like, there's just not a lot of people voting in this category or even submitting in this category. I mean, submissions alone is like drastic fraction of the the main categories, right? So, you know, you might have like 10,000 submissions in one category, but then you go to rock and metal and it's like hundreds of submissions. It's literally like hilariously low and that's part of the problem. And that's why the Grammys won't give us more categories like best alternative rock album or best hard rock album. If we had more people participating, more people in the Academy actually submitting and voting, um, we would probably get those awards and that would make things a little bit more clear. But since it's sure. not that way today, we have basically uh, this one award for metal and there's so many mistakes being made across all at, uh, facets of the industry. So the labels aren't submitting correctly. The bands aren't submitting correctly. Sometimes bands and labels just don't even submit at all because they think either they have zero chance because Metallica or Foo Fighters is going to win or like they uh, just don't even care about the Grammys or something like that. And uh, that's kind of part of the problem. That's like one side of the problem is the fact that we just don't have that participation that if we if we had more of that, I think things would be a little more clear and uh, a little less confusing. That's interesting. It, it, all of that is so fascinating. And the additional categories, I think, could definitely help. And that's probably a part of the problem is that they're all competing for limited space. But still, you know, maybe I'm maybe I'm really overstating Sleep Token here, but they feel like a real special band right now. You look at what went on with the ticket sales ordeal where um, it seems even like they could have been playing a lot bigger venues than they're playing on this tour, even though they're already massive. But, uh, you know, going for, forward for the Grammys, if you could improve that process, you know, if I'm going to complain, I want to try to find a solution and be constructive. What would you, what do you think could be improved about this process, you know, other than that expansion that could make this better? So I've had the unique privilege to serve on a committee. Um, I did uh, five consecutive years on a rock nomination review committee. I was actually part of the very first one, which was really fascinating for me to know that there wasn't one before me. Um, uh, unfortunately, after those five consecutive years, I don't get to serve again. And that's just the way the things work because they want to keep things fresh and whatever. But during my time there, we had uh, this ability to essentially say, hey, there's a band that isn't on here for one reason or another, and you guys need to know about this band. And the purpose of that is really just about marketing dollars, because you can have a band that is just so powerful in terms of media, press, marketing. They can, they can get their song in front of so many people, and that kind of gets them on the ballot and gets them votes. And um, the Grammys are not all about trying to make this a popularity contest, but unfortunately the way that human nature works is that it's just like when you look at a list of hundreds of things, you're going to just poke at the things that you know, like, oh yeah, I know Paramore. Oh yeah, I know Foo Fighters and Metallica. It's hard to notice the other hundred nominees that might have great work in there. So there's this idea of sort of like an egregious omission, which is like, hey, 
this band didn't have the marketing dollars, didn't have the firepower, the advertising, the ammo, whatever it is to kind of get in front of the right people to get the right votes. And um, that's a very pow powerful idea because you can get a band like August Burns Red or like, you know, um, the Periphery or whatever kind of up there into the nominees because it's just and like they had some years by the way they had some years there where they had those kind of nominees and and things were you know wherever they're at now i was really excited to see certain bands getting those nominees like august burns red a very talented and well-respected band but sorry continue yeah exactly so these well-respected bands are known in the metal community and in the genre that we're voting on but to the voting body like I said, again, a very small slice of that voting body participates in this award category. They, they're voting on this specific award, and there's a ton of them that are not. And because of that small participation, it's going to be very biased towards the, the home names, the people that uh, have the marketing dollar and have the advertising reach to just get the votes. You know, the Grammys don't control who wins. It's, it goes back to the voters and the voters are qualified people like myself and many others in this field. You know, they're producers, right. engineers, musicians, artists, people that are touring, you know, people that make the records, the record labels. All of these people are participating in these votes, but no one has time every year to research every damn new band and every damn new song. And so it kind of comes to this pissing match of who has the most reach or the most power and the thing that I found to be the most the most useful thing that Grammys ever did was the committee um, where we could actually talk about these things and get together and say, hey, you guys need to be paying attention to nothing more. You guys need to be listening to I Prevail. And would you play these records? By the way, there's a requirement. You play the record in the room. Everyone has to listen to it. It's not like wow. you just get to mention it, right? So you're listening to I Prevail right next to Slipknot or whatever. And these are the types of scenarios where uh, a, a very informed participant body get to make a decision very clearly because you're hearing it and you have that you're carving out the time to listen to that music and give it a chance. And I think that's the thing that's really tough is that everyone's busy. There's so much going on. But if there's a way to sort of carve out that time and give these artists a chance to actually be heard. And, and by the way, I'm not speaking for everyone. I'm sure there's a, a lot of voters that actually go and listen to every damn song. Totally. Every damn record, right? Totally. Like, you know, benefit of the doubt there. But it's not being um, shown in the nominees. It's not being shown in the voting body. I, I feel like that is definitely underrepresented. It, it has been upper, underrepresented. Yeah, like like Joey, we're probably sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are many people out there who are involved in this that are going, we did suggest sleep token, right? I mean, there's no way that there weren't people floating sleep token at all. I mean, they're, they've gotten wildly popular. There's many ty types of meetings that happen throughout the year where these kinds of things are discussed. Um, uh, and it is quite possible that maybe one label didn't show up to one meeting or one band forgot to submit or whatever. Sure. There's, there's these kinds of surface le level things that can really prevent you from even getting into the race. It's a great point. That is a very great point. And if you don't do those first few steps, then you're just not eligible. And that, and that's a very sad thing. Um, but what's even worse is when somebody does go through all of those steps and then submits like their pop song into the best metal performance category and then you're going like, I get why you're doing that because that's your popular song, but you know that metalheads are the only people who vote on this category in the first place. And if you're putting out some real poppy song into here, everyone's just going to be like, this is garbage. Like, I want the most metal thing that's here. You know, that's kind of what the best metal performance kind of embodies uh, usually. But um, there's just so many different ways to get pushed out of the race or to fall off the playing field. And um I think the Grammys should try to do a better job of educating people how to avoid those pitfalls. And also um, one big thing that I want everyone to take away from this, this whole moment here is really we just need more people to participate. We need more people to um, enroll. We need more people voting. We need more people submitting. By the way, when you join the Grammys, um, it's there's a couple of like criteria that you have to go through and that's all on their website. But once you've joined, Anyone that is a member can submit anything. 
So I could just be a music fan and just be like, I'm submitting Sleep Token. I'm submitting Metallica. I, like anyone can submit. Um, and, and songs get submitted like multiple times, I'm sure, maybe falling through the cracks. Different people are submitting. But once it gets submitted, it's like they check to make sure it's eligible. And then once it's eligible, it goes on the books. And then there's a first round of voting where we all vote just based on all the submissions. And then that gets whittled down into like a top five, which is the nominees. And then we vote on the nominee. So there's two voting rounds. And I don't want to get too specific, but the reality is that we can make a huge difference in the metal and rock community if we just get more people to join and participate. It would be like even if you had 20 bands, which like the average band is four to five members, that's 100 new people coming into the category voting and that's probably going to make like somewhere between a two to 10% difference in the final results, which is a huge, 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 huge difference that you can make if you just get 20 bands to join. So that's kind of the, the thing that I, pe I want people to walk away from this. That's outstanding. And Joey, you're on fire, man. That was a great presentation. I learned so much in such a short amount of time talking to you. Joey Sergis, everybody, knocked it out of the park. That was so impressive. Uh, thank you for joining us, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a good time. Wow, Joey was actually on fire there. I'm so glad I had him on. I've known Joey for a while. Great dude. So cool to have him on the channel. That's your latest update from Rockfeed. Be sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications on. Support us on Patreon if you'd like. I'd appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video.